Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at a fantastic looking armor set that you can grab early game. It's going to be a heavy armor set, but you get some weapons with it as well. Obviously, the higher the level you are, it's farming enemies. So the higher the level you are, the easier it's going to be to obtain, but it still won't be too hard even if you are a low level. And just quickly, before we get any further into the video, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get back to it. So, from the first step, what we are going to do is head east over to Dragon Burnt Ruins. So, if I jump on my mount, we're just going to head straight east. And um, we're going to drop off this edge down here. Then you can see the ruins in the distance. What we're going to do is over this wall here. We are going to jump over. We're going to get off our mount. We're going to run down under here. There's going to be a room full of rats. So you might have to clear those out quickly. But we're going to come through to the far end and there is a chest. Open it. We're going to be trapped and we are going to get teleported to a different area. As soon as you are teleported into the tunnel, I'm going to heal up just in case. And then I'm also going to pop this. You don't need this. It's not required. But as soon as you come out here, you can go left or right. But if you come left, it's just a quicker route. Make it down here. There's going to be a sniper, so be careful. That's exactly why I put the bubble on. But it shouldn't kill you, even if it does hit you. And it will typically only hit you once. But drop down and interact with this site of grace. This is Celia Crystal Tunnel. Then from the Crystal Tunnel, as long as you've grabbed that site of grace, we'll come back here. But make your way back to the first step. From the first step, what you're going to do is head up north to Gatefront. Come along to Stormhill Shack. Then, as soon as we get to Stormhill Shack, I will show you the next step. So, from the shack, if you head up north, we're going to skip the castle, so you don't even need to take down Godric to progress this far. Instead of following the path round, follow it off to the right onto the dirt path. Follow this all the way along until you get to the bridge, and then go to the very end of the bridge. When you arrive at the end of this bridge, if you come down here, follow it all the way round to the left on the grass up into the rock formation, roughly at the top of my character's head. There's a little passage that leads round to the right. Follow that all the way round. And what that's going to do from Stormhill Shack is you're coming up this way, coming through to the bridge, going up into the rock formation, then following it round, and you're going around the outside of the castle. Make your way to Lake Facing Cliffs. If you just follow the passage, you will eventually arrive at this site of grace. From here... Head all the way along the main path and go down to Lyernia Lake Shore. Then from Lyernia Lake Shore, you need to head up north. Keep going, just following the lake. You're just staying in the lake. There's no like tricky obstacles or secrets or anything like that. And as soon as you get up to here, this is eastern Lyernia Lake Shore. You are then going to stick to the main path, follow it round to the left hand side. And you are going to come up to eastern Tableland. One thing you also need to do is at the lake facing cliffs, which is round here, the very first time you interact with this, you're going to get a cutscene, you're going to be taken to the round table hold. It's also known as the table of lost grace. You can fast travel there from the bottom left of your map. When you are in the round table hold, if you come round to the left hand side, go through this room here. So in the Twin Maiden Husks purchase menu, if you go to here, you need to purchase the finger seal. It's going to cost you 800 runes. But make sure you get that. You are going to need it. So from the round table hold, make your way to eastern table land. And as soon as you arrive, if you are struggling to get your hands on runes, just kill enemies in the game. It's one of the fastest ways to do it. If not, there are so many different farms all over YouTube for your runes. But what you want to do from the Eastern Table Land site of Grace is jump on your mount and you'll see these like wooden spikes. This is a little monk camp or fire monk camp. And what you want to do is enter on the far west side of it. 
And as soon as we get in, on your left-hand side, I think it's on that corpse there, there's going to be a loot drop. It's an incantation called Flame Cleanse Me. Once you have got that, we are going to return to Celia Crystal Tunnel. So back over in Kalid on the right side of the map, Celia Crystal Tunnel. So now, if you go to your equipment, you equip the finger seal in your left hand. That's going to give you the ability to cast incantations. So if you sit down at the site of Grace, you are going to head into the Memorize Spell tab. And you are going to equip Flame Cleanse Me. It's going to alleviate buildup and cure poison and scarlet rot. So then what we're going to do, that's also good for getting the Golden Scarab by the way. What we're going to do is head out of this tunnel to the south and we're going to come to Inner Eonia. So make your way outside, you can't summon your mount whilst you're in the tunnel. But you get outside and you're basically just going to this gigantic tree in front of you. It's just a little bit to the right hand side of it. So pretty much head south and keep following the path that I'm on. Then when we get to this section here, be careful of all the weird bubbles and stuff. You're going to see the Sight of Grace. So from Inner Eonia, what you're going to do is jump on your mount. Make sure that you have Flame Cleanse Me ready to go. And head southwest exactly where I'm going. And then right here, you're going to jump off. There's going to be an enemy that spawns right there. So you're going to take out the enemy. As I said, the higher the level, the easier it is. But you're going to farm this enemy. So jump on the mount again. You're going to come over here, southwest. Stand on this section. There's going to be another one of the dudes that spawns in. So if I take this one out, it would be very nice if we could actually uh, get some loot. But you'll see, I've been invaded. So you would have just seen that I got invaded by someone called Millicent. And it's basically an NPC in the game. That wants to be cured of Scarlet Rot. But jumping back on the mount, I need to go gather my runes again. What you want to do is head southwest, and on this little section here, we are going to absolutely ruin this enemy. Still no loot drops for some reason. I'm then going to grab my runes. So, again, from the Sight of Grace. Try not to roll in the Scarlet Rot because it just builds up and up and up because you're like entirely covered in it. So come back to this area again, southwest of the Site of Grace. I'm going to absolutely destroy that enemy. And we've got ourselves a loot drop. So that's the Gauntlets. Now, if we carry on southwest over to this little section here. There's going to be another one of the dudes that spawns in. That one's done as well. Then, keep going southwest and through here. You do have a chance of a third one spawning in. It doesn't happen all the time, but if the third one does, simply take it down, then fast travel back. If it doesn't, you've taken two down, fast travel back. I've been invaded by Millicent again. There we go, finally dealt with Millicent. Got myself the legs. So yeah, from I'll, I'll show you a complete run of all three. Because I believe you can actually force the spawn of the third one. And as I said, as well as the armor, you can get yourself the weapons. Uh, again, please let me spawn my horse. So from the inner Eonia site of Grace, southwest. In this exact direction I'm going. As soon as you get to here, you're going to get about 700 runes per kill as well. So I'm going to take out the first one. Unfortunately, no drop. Get back on my horse. Keep heading southwest. Stand here. And then with this one, it's the same again. Unfortunately, no drop. This could take a little while. And then around here... You're just going to stand about here. Then the dude starts coming up. Unfortunately, no drop. Back to the site of Grace and we go again. There's actually a fourth one. 
from the third one, there's one that randomly spawns in. We might be able to make this faster and faster. Because the farm can potentially take, I don't know, you could be there for an hour or two. It depends on how long it's taking you to kill them. You can use lots of different weapons in the game. You can even use starting weapons. What I'd recommend is grabbing some smithing stones and stuff and upgrading them a couple of levels. You can use spirits. You can summon spirits to help take some of the aggro off you. You can run a shield if you get the barricade shield. You can uh, block loads of damage. The brass shield from gate front will have a lot of damage negation. Well, 100 for physical damage. Oh, there was a loot drop. There we go, got ourselves the armor. We just need the mask and the two weapons. Halfway through. But that, from number one, come over to number two. Take number two down. Loot drop off number two. Legs again. That's the one thing you don't want is duplicated stuff. So come around this way, there's gonna be another one here and you'll see the other one in the distance. So there are four of these that you can farm. Ah, oh, third one never dropped any loot. But then come over to the fourth one. I mean, two out of four enemies with loot, that's not bad. There we go, got the clean rot knight sword, literally following run. Just need one weapon and the mask. Yes, got the helmet. But now it's going to be tough because there are six pieces to the set. I've got five, so the amount of duplicates when I do get drops are going to be really high. I'm going to leave this one in the video. No, I was hoping for a drop. Imagine the next enemy I got a drop and it was the right one. Just need the final weapon, that's it. Oh, that's the fourth sword I've had now. I need the other weapon, please. Next enemy, next drop. No! Don't want the gauntlets. Three drops in a row, please. I've got no chance. Oh, I have got a chance. No, it's the helmet again! Just to show you before I sell them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the bloody things. I've had six lots of the gloves. I've also had five lots of the legs. You can tell which parts are the most common. I've uh, just found a fifth one. So what you do is come to the very first spot. And we are going to take down this first one. Then you head over to spot number two. You wait for spot number two to spawn in. Barely any bloody loot drops anymore. I had a couple of, like, two and three loot drop runs out of the four. Like, four enemies. But I've not had any of that since. So this is round to number three. I'm doing a lot of runs with no loot. This is number four. I always just come up behind this one, use my beam, take this one down, and I've been fast traveling. But you come over here, you'll see the hand there. There's number five. Number five dropped a bit of loot. Number five dropped two bits of loot. What? Gauntless and Greaves. Not the fucking thing I'm looking for, not the weapon that I need, for two drops from a single enemy. Okay, RNG Jesus is on my side, just in a very weird way. I was going to include a lot of the, like, not the shitty runs, the runs with the loot, that I just, I get disappointed when it's not the thing I'm looking for. But because I found more ways to make this efficient, like finding the extra enemies, oh, I'm going to cut a lot of them out. But yeah, there's five enemies to farm. There might be more if you just look around the area. So I had to drop off the first enemy. I'm going to keep this run in the video. 
Just because uh, the fingers crossed I can get two drops. Like two separate drops from the enemies in a single run. It's not happened for so long. Come on. Two more chances. Enemy number four. Oh, we did it. Oh, we got the fucking weapon. Halo Scythe. I'm going to kill this one for luck. Imagine getting two Halo Scythes in one run. No. <laughs> no, that, that's pushing my luck. Right, so we have the full set of six items. I started recording this video an hour and five minutes ago. There is a chance it could take you longer. There is a chance it could be much quicker for you. But we are going to return to the first step. And I am going to show you this armor set in its entirety. So with this, obviously, I am running an astrologer. So it's not going to benefit me in the slightest. It's just a very cool looking armor set. So, if we go into our equipment, first I will put on the, where is it, the Halo Scythe. So, you'll see it's got physical, holy damage, it's got D, scaling for strength and dexterity, E for faith. It causes blood loss buildup at a rating of 55. It requires 15 of faith, 16 dexterity and 13 of strength. And it weighs 8.5, it's heavy. But we'll equip that one. Then in the second slot, we have the Clean Rot Knight's Sword. Its weight is 4. It scales on strength and dexterity at a rating of D. It requires 11 strength and 13 dexterity. So we'll equip that one. So you have a nice looking sword. You also have a very nice looking scythe. And this one, where was it? There you go, with the sword, you can do Impaling Thrust as a skill. That's going to be very good, a nice lunge attack. But now let's put the uh, the meat of the video on, the armor set. So, we have the Clean Rot Helm. You can see the stats on this, as I said, is very, very heavy. But we'll equip the helmet. And then we go along and we'll equip this. Look at the stats on that. All the physicals are above 13. Even the other stats are above 11. Then if we go into the gloves, the clean rot over the royal remains, every stat is better. Obviously it's heavier, but every stat is better. Then into the greaves, and again, every single stat is better than the royal remains. And now, when you come out of it, this is what you look like. This is a very, very cool looking set. I absolutely love the look of this one. It's got that gold finish to it. And a lot of people, uh, I mean, I'm guessing a lot of people because I did myself, absolutely love the Tree Sentinel set purely because of its gold look. Whereas this is really easy to get in terms of the Tree Sentinel or comparing to the Tree Sentinel. It's very heavy, you can get it really close to the start instead of having to travel all the way up to the outside of the capital. And I mean, just overall, you get the weapons with it as well. You don't have to go into separate areas to get the weapons for it. I think this is one of the best sets I've found so far. I like my Royal Remains just because of how light it is. And I believe there's also some health regen when you get low health, but you have to be like really low health for it to kick in. But yeah, this set, very, very nice, although I wouldn't use it on my current build for the Astrologer. I'd probably go back as my Samurai and get it with that. But that was a look at the Clean Rot armor set in Elden Ring, and that is going to wrap up this video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.